sling for competition is the regular standard leather sling. That's the one that I recommend that you use. You probably with an M16 need a sling that's 54 inches long. Say it. 54, 54 inches, inches long. long. With M1s and M14s, 50 inch slings and 52s will work because the rear sling swivel is closer, but on an M16 it's further out. So you're going to need a 54 inch sling if you're going to make an investment on one of these slings that are over $50. They're somewhere between $50 and $70 when you buy them online from Creedmoor. Now, the loop sling has a two-fold purpose. And one of the most idiotic things I've ever heard anyone say is people say, why do you shoot with a sling on your rifle? You don't shoot with a sling on in combat. You don't shoot with a sling on when you're deer hunting. Why do you shoot at stationary targets? Damn enemy don't stand still for you. Well, I'll tell you this. You'll never learn how to shoot until you learn how to shoot fundamentally. Until you learn how fundamental marksmanship. And a loop sling has a two-fold purpose. The first thing it does is it provides maximum stability for the rifle. Say it. Provides nice. maximum, maximum stability, stability for the, the rifle. rifle. What does that mean? If I said, young lady, have you ever shot a rifle? And she says, no, sir. I say, good. Get up here and pick up this rifle and sit down in the sitting position. Take it and aim in. And I want you to do all that stuff I told you back in the tent. I want you to accept your aiming area and I want you to squeeze the trigger. Well, when she holds that rifle up and tries to do that, what do you think her aiming area is going to be? Five ring to five ring. Five ring to five ring? It might be completely off the target mm -hmm. because she's not practiced. Mm -hmm. But if I put a sling on, suddenly it provides maximum stability from the rifle. And that big movement that she saw goes into a very small aiming area. She's a lot more solid. She's a lot tighter. And it's like that little locomotive trying to chug the little red engine, trying to chug up the hill. He starts going what? I think I, I, think I, think can. I can. I think I can. I think I can. So the first, full, the twofold purpose is the loop sling provides maximum stability for the rifle. And the second thing it does is it instills confidence in the shooter. Say it. Instills confidence, confidence in the, in the shooter. shooter. Provides maximum stability for the rifle and therefore provides instills confidence in the shooter. That's how a shooter learns the technique of slow fire. Sits down sitting with a sling on. Lays down prone with a sling on. And learns to hold them and squeeze them. Learns the technique of slow fire. Then learns the technique of rapid fire. Only then, when he's mastered the fundamentals, can he or she transition into a tactical or a hunting type situation when they don't have a sling on. Then when they sit down, they'll be a lot more steady and they'll be able to learn to the good application of aiming and trigger control. So a loop sling has a twofold purpose, provides maximum stability for the rifle and instills confidence in the shooter. In our national clinic, we give all this periods of instruction and the students take notes and I issue an examination. And if you don't pass the examination, you don't get the certificate. You guys lucked out. Now, this sling, how many of you use a leather sling right now? Raise your hand. How many of you truthfully have a sling that's configured for you, but you would never want anybody to come up to your sling and do this to it. <laughs> Raise your hand. Because if they did do it, you'd be all messed up, right? Because you've already got it set up. You know what it is supposed to do, but if someone just took it all apart, you'd be lost. Well, I'm gonna teach you how to assemble and put the sling on the rifle, not only so you can do it as an individual, but I'm gonna teach it so you can do it, so you can do it and teach it to other people. First off, you have a long piece. The long piece has a hook on one end. Some people call them dogs. Some people call them frogs. In fact, they're a sling hook. I call them dogs because I'm a Marine. Marines call them dogs, and so I call it a dog. You can call it a frog or a hook if you want to, but I call it a dog. 
On the other end of the long piece is what's known as the feed end of the sling. If you don't remember anything about this period of instruction, remember one thing, that the feed end of the sling always goes down through the upper sling swivel. Altogether, the feed end of the sling always goes down through the upper sling swivel. Then you have a short piece. The short piece has a D-ring on it, and it has a dog on the other end. That's the piece that attaches to the butt stock of the rifle. There. It's got a D-ring and it's got a butt stock, I mean a D-ring and a dog on the other end. You'll notice that this sling has a smooth side and a rough side, just like a pair of shoes. It's got a smooth side like suede and it's got a rough side. You have two keepers. In service rifle competition, you can only use two. You can use, no, you can use one, but you can't use any more than two keepers. You can't put any clips or any any type of, uh, of any clips or any hooks onto these keepers. If the keepers get stretched out, you can take a razor blade and cut the stitching and re-stitch them with dental floss to make them a little bit tighter if they start to slide up. Now, these two keepers are like Canadian geese, which means they mate and they stay together for life. Mm -hmm. They're never separated. They're always together, and they stay together their entire life. You'll never have the, the keepers separated on your sling, one above the dog and one below the dog. They're always together. But unlike Canadian geese, they don't migrate. They only go one place on the sling, up against the dog. Say it. Up against the dog. Louder. Up against the dog. You have no idea what I'm talking about, right? I'm going to show you. So, to put the sling together correctly, the first thing you do is pick the long piece up in your left hand, holding it by the dog. Pick the short piece up in the right hand, holding it by the dog. Okay? Lay the long piece down on the ground, smooth side up, with the dog facing outboard. Lay the short piece down on the ground, rough side up, dog facing outboard. That's easy enough, right? Long piece down on the ground, smooth side up, dog facing outboard. Short piece laying down on the ground, rough side up, dog facing outboard. My two keepers are always together, right? And where do they go? Up against, against the, the dog. dog. All together? Up, up, up against, against, the, up against dog. the dog. So I'm going to take these keepers and I'm going to run them over that feed end and I'm going to run them all the way up against my dog. Now I've got my keepers in the right place and I'm ready to assemble the two pieces of the sling together. So just like the feed end of the sling always goes down, down through the upper sling swivel, this feed end goes down through the dog. If you can't see what I'm doing, Stand up and get over here so you can see it. Take the feed end and run it down through the dog and pull it all the way through about three quarters of the way. Once you pulled it through about three quarters of the way, you're almost 90% to forming the loop. Now I'm just going to pick up the dog and I'm going to include my sling in my keepers. And this is a really nice tight sling. The keepers are very nice and tight and I pull it through three quarters of the way and I formed a loop and I made sure that my keepers are against the dog. all together up, up, against, against, the up dog. against the dog. I got my keepers up against the dog and I formed a loop and I have the sling in the proper configuration and I'm ready to place it on my service rifle. Now, let me have a service rifle with a sling off of it, Nick. Good that you brought this up here. Take a look at this empty chamber indicator that Nate has here. You see this empty chamber indicator right here? That's wrong. You can't use it. Go get my other one, You're going to have to get your other one. This empty chamber indicator does not go into the. And you could still have a round in the chamber and put this thing in. And it's not acceptable for CMP or NRA competition. Okay? Now, I do have a rifle and 
I treat all weapons as if they are loaded. If anyone ever hands you a rifle, the first thing you do is ensure that the weapon is on safe, which this one is not. And then I'm going to inspect the chamber and make sure that my chamber is clear. My muzzle is elevated and pointed in a safe direction. Will you verify that that chamber is clear, young lady? Clear. That's called a secondary inspection. That never hurts. So what I do is I put my empty chamber indicator in, and I always just ease my bolt against it like that. That keeps it from falling out on me. And I know I got a complete safe weapon like this. Sometimes on ranges, they won't let you do that. The guy will correct you and tell you to lock it to the rear. So whatever they tell you works. Now, when you handle a rifle, you always maintain control of the rifle. You never would walk up and arbitrarily sit down on the ground with a rifle and put the butt stock down to work with the sling. Why? The bolt just closed on you. Because when I'm working with my sling here with my rifle, what is my, what is the, the, where is my muzzle pointed? To the rear. It's pointing in the wrong direction, isn't it? How many people did you see sit down and work with their sling like this? Where is my muzzle pointed now? Laterally. It's pointing laterally. You never put that butt stock down on the deck sitting on your ass and work with a rifle. Plus, if it's a hot rifle, sooner or later you'll put that son of a bitch next to your neck. <laughs> and you'll really know what's happening. And I've seen many Marines do that before too. When you work with a sling on a rifle, it is always cradled, excuse my profanity there, it's always cradled on your hip with the muzzle elevated and pointed downrange. You can work with this rifle on the firing line and you'll never, I can stand right in front of you and I'm not pointing it in an unsafe direction, am I? So I'm cradling the rifle on my hip and the first thing I'm going to do to place the sling on my weapon is I'm going to take the feed end of the sling and what I do to make sure that I have it in the correct direction is I hold that dog right against the hand guard. So I'm not reversed. I hold that dog right against the hand guard and I take the feet into the sling and I run it down through the upper sling swivel. And I recommend you start in the second or third set of holes if you don't know for your position. So I'm going to find the third set of holes on here and I'm going to run my keepers what? Up against, up the, dog. against, up against the, dog. the dog and that feet end goes back up toward the muzzle just like that. Can everybody see that? Now, to correctly configure this rifle so I have proper sling discipline, I'm going to take this dog on the bottom and I'm going to run it through that sling hook here. And I'm just going to pull it through and make a little loop. See how I made the little loop just like that? Can everybody see that? I ran it through there and I just made a little loop. I didn't try to put it in the middle. I just made a little loop and I pulled it through and now I have it properly configured to my rifle, just like that. And I'm ready to place the sling on my arm. Now, whenever I place the sling on my arm, I cradle it on my hip, and I take this sling and I make one half turn outboard. Say it, one, one half, half turn, turn outboard. outboard. You always have to make that twist. One half turn outboard before you place that arm in through there. If you don't, then the sling is going to loosen itself when you get in position. Vice tighten itself. So I make one half turn outboard and I place that sling up nice and high on my big manly muscular arm here. And I use my thumb in this manner like this. I grab the inboard strap and I use my thumb like this, cradle it on my hip and I push it back and forth until I got it coming right straight off the front of my arm. I don't want it around here to the back where it'll torque my arm when I'm in position, and I don't want it around on the inboard side to where it'll loosen itself. I want to make sure it's coming right straight off the front of my arm. Now, that sling's never going to be loose. It's going to be tight, and I'm going to have a consistent setting with regard to whatever hole I'm on. Now, this D-ring that I have, I take the D-ring, and I always push it up right against the keepers so it's not down underneath my arm pressing against that artery like a metal clip. I push that up there. Now, this is proper sling discipline. I have the rear part of the sling attached to the rifle, and all I really got to do is just hold my hand out in front of me. And this rifle will always stay 
elevated and pointed in a safe direction. If I'm going up and down and sitting, or I'm going up and down and prone, all I gotta do is just hold my hand and it's always gonna be pointed in a safe direction. But, if I did not have proper sling discipline, and I did some weird stuff like this, then when I go down and sitting, my butt could always swing in an unnatural position, especially with a big heavy weighted rifle. You understand why you should have proper sling discipline? And it's very, very important that Marines especially do it right, because who do you think teaches the youth of our nation? United States Marine Corps teaches them in the National Junior Clinic. So it's very, very important that you have proper sling discipline. Now, in standing, you have to have the sling attached to the rifle. If you shoot any shots without the sling attached to the rifle, they're scored as a miss. So you want to make what's called in the Marine Corps a parade sling. So you just simply take the bottom part of the strap here, cradling it on your hip and working with it, and you run it up here and you find any set of holes. Go up and find any set of holes. Once you find that any set of holes and you attach the sling to it like that, you grab the outboard side of the strap and you can tighten it down by pulling the outboard and you can make it as tight as you want. Now, a right-handed shooter configures the sling on the left side of the rifle like that. That's so when he goes, he or she goes to grasp the rifle in standing, it doesn't interfere with the grip. You can include the sling in the grasp or you can do that. But if you have the sling on the wrong side of the rifle and it looks like this, that is incorrect. And people can challenge you and say that you're trying to use artificial support. So if you're doing that, save yourself the, the heartache of someone coming up and screwing with you and telling you, because really that ain't gonna help you anyway. All it is is just simply incorrect. If you put the sling on the left side of the rifle and you include it in your grasp, it gives you a little bit more elevation anyway when you're including it in your grasp like that. And the rifle rests naturally in the V form by the thumb and index finger. Now, if you want to make a carrying strap, all you do is just take it loose and then hook it to the top set of holes on your D on your short piece. See, I hooked it to the top set of holes on my short piece, and I made a carrying strap. And I can go from yard line to yard line with all my gear carrying it. That's how you properly use the loop sling. Are there any questions concerning this period of instruction? Any at all? The loop sling does what? Provides maximum stability for the rifle. All of these courses that we shoot in competition were designed by the United States military as training courses of fire to train soldiers and Marines, even airmen and sailors in fundamental marksmanship. And they have evolved into competitive courses of fire. And many people will say, them damn competitive marksmen, they can't shoot. Whatever they do has no relevance to combat. But I'll tell you something, the United States Marine Corps and the United States Army, the competition in arms program has one purpose. It enhances the overall effectiveness of the Marine Corps in combat. These Marines and soldiers that come out here and learn the fundamentals of marksmanship, they learn how to zero rifles, operate service rifles fundamentally, back to the maximum effective range. These are the trained marksmen that will easily transition into a combat environment and be far more effective as a tactical or a combat rifleman than an untrained marksman in fun fundamentals.